As the country nears its moment of quiet reflection, the political storm gets noisier. Rishi Sunak is pondering his Home Secretary's future after she appears to have defied his authority and published an article criticising the police, ignoring number 10 demands to tone the article down. In The Times today, the Home Secretary wrote of a perception that senior police officers play favourites. Lockdown objectors were given no quarter by public order police, she wrote, yet Black Lives Matter demonstrators were enabled, allowed to break rules and even greeted with officers taking the knee. Unlike right-wing extremist protesters, she wrote, pro-Palestinian mobs displaying almost identical behaviour are largely ignored, even when clearly breaking the law. I'll see, I'll see you back. Okay. back the right. Today, number 10, let it be known that article, in accordance with the rules for cabinet ministers, was submitted for approval, but requested changes, not minor changes, the Prime Minister's spokesman said, were not made. Winning. That could constitute a breach of the ministerial code of conduct, potentially a sackable offence. Number 10 insists it is still looking into what happened, but a planned reshuffle could now be imminent. Stop, is going to be a here. The number 10 reshuffle whiteboard here photographed as Boris Johnson tried to backfill the mass ministerial resignations that brought him down could be back. The scale will be much smaller, but the whiff of revolt brings horrible echoes for Rishi Sunak. In theory, this is all about the march that could take place just after Saturday's 11am commemoration at the Cenotaph. An hour later, the pro-Palestinian march is due to start in Hyde Park and proceed some distance from Whitehall towards the American embassy. Suella Braverman wanted that cancelled. Some ministers sound unconvinced. They're not going to be anywhere near the Cenotaph and the uh, Metropolitan Police are bending over backwards to make sure that everybody who comes up into London, whether you're selling poppies, whether you're attending a reunion or you're going to Remembrance, is completely unmolested. The Prime Minister had voiced similar concerns to Suella Braverman about the pro-Palestinian march, but yesterday signalled he was yielding to the Metropolitan Police Chief Sir Mark Rowley's arguments for now. Suella Braverman's article alleging police bias will have made grim reading in the top ranks of the police force. I think there would be a considerable unhappiness, perhaps resentment and anger, that uh, a senior politician, above all the Home Secretary herself, would uh, say these things in these terms, because it, it just creates a, a political environment which the police should not be drawn into. Is it politically charged to use the word invasion in relation to the small boats problem? I, don't, I said I don't, I don't, what I would say is the situation is one that is significant. The Prime Minister's repeatedly found himself dodging challenges to back the strident language of Suella Braverman. So when you hear your Home Secretary talk about the hurricane of mass migration, are you not embarrassed and ashamed? No, I think that this, this debate gets charged a lot. You would agree with Suella Braverman's comments? Now, as I said, I don't want anyone to have to sleep rough. Yeah. There was more discomfort on Tuesday as Rishi Sunak again ducked invitations to back his Home Secretary's language. This political relationship now looks broken beyond repair, and many think that has long been Suella Braverman's strategy. There's been a feeling amongst uh, some in Rishi Sunak's team that Suella Braverman's been sort of looking around uh, for a fight, something, a cause on which she can uh, resign on, uh, perhaps. And it could have been the Supreme Court decision, we now think coming next week, uh, which could rule against the government's plans on Rwanda. She could resign over that if she said uh, the Prime Minister wasn't moving fast enough. She could resign, some of her own supporters have suggested to me, over the autumn statement if there weren't tax cuts. So this feeling amongst Rishi Sunak supporters, that all of this was about uh, Suella Braverman trying to set herself up as the uh, idealistic, uh, principled candidate of the right, uh, potentially for a leadership challenge. Fascinatingly, most people think that challenge, uh, in the minds of her supporters, would be after the general election. But you talk to some of them and they talk about actually moving towards a vote of no confidence in Rishi Sunak. It requires, under the current numbers of the Conservative Party, uh, 53 MPs to put in uh, letters of no confidence. That's probably not going to happen, but it's exactly the kind of turbulence that Rishi Sunak said, in addition to economic turbulence, that he was coming in to calm down. It's exactly what he didn't want. What happens next? 
well, I think we'll get the reshuffle, which he was uh, planning for uh, the next few weeks. In that reshuffle, one of the casualties is almost certainly Suella Braverman. The only question, I think, right now is when we get it.